Right before I plunge into my story, I want to show what is going on at the moment here. It is all connected with what I want to say. Blizzards, hurricanes and severe weather conditions may once be the cause of inevitable destruction of our house, as well as many other old houses around the area. As a reminder, we own the house that marks the frontier of the village. It is the last building on the road to the fields, especially during winter, you can rarely see any footprints leading to this part of the village. This December is rather harsh in terms of weather. From time to time, it is essential to clean the snow off the top of the polytunnel, for such an amount of snow can damage and break it. But comparing to previous years, there is obviously a drastic change in weather pattern. The story starts in 1966 when my grandfather purchased this same house to start a family. He died very early so my grandmother lived there for many years alone. She had chronic asthma and couldn't do much around the house, especially fixing something or even asking for help. My grandma died in 2007, leaving this house on its own. These videos are from 2008 when the house looked like the way she left it. Unfortunately, I don't have many videos from that time. We kept chickens, her 11-year-old dog was still alive and I just spent time there with my mom and my cousin whom you can see on these videos. From time to time, especially when I was studying at the university, me and my mom looked after the house only during summers, but harsh winters for the past 15 years since my grandmother's death were really hard on it. This year we started a budget renovation that was supposed to prolong the structure and protect it from destructive processes. The first step was to fix the wood stove, the main source of warmth for winter. The house stood damp for the most part of the time. The wood stove has a tunnel inside that lets the air in and smoke out. I thought it needed cleaning, but it turned out to be okay. And that is the front side. We used to have roof leaking here, but we managed to fix it. So the problem was that uh, just because kind of a house is falling apart, so there were a lot of cracks that we managed to put clay on so it's still uh th there is a bit of smoke going from some of the cracks but it's literally impossible to cover all the cracks My cousin helped to fix the broken roof near the pipe so that area wouldn't be leaking anymore. Another major problem was with the ceiling, which was literally eaten by mice, and walls that moved a bit because we had to raise the house to put brick base for one side that was sinking into the ground. I changed rotten boards in the place where the roof was leaking. This is actually the color of our future ceiling. I thought of um, what kind of a ceiling to make from what material that can be affordable. And you know, I think it'll work out well. But the colour is mesmerising. 
We also moved two beds from the second room to make this room the main one. The problem with the floor is the biggest one. Almost all the boards are half rotten and it would take a lot to replace them. I started with replacing some base logs that are holding all the boards. Then I will gradually look at what I can do with the rest of the floor. This year revealed a problem that would lead to inevitable destruction. The northern walls were severely damaged by fungi. The situation became critical and we had to think fast and ask a family friend to fix it. That's what he came up with. And then the roof started leaking again with the arrival of autumn showers. had a leakage so there was a crack and under this crack the ceiling is wet so it caused this terrible leakage and uh, there are some other cracks I think I need to also close them using the foam I don't have anything else I'm mean, like I can't go from that side and just do something with it the same in here the crack and in general that's the space. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? We used to have snakes living in here because one of them once fell uh, fell from the ceiling. But right now I checked it, no one lives in here. Like occasionally some rats can run around or can run around or a cat.
that's the result I have at the moment. As for November, when I was filming it, the second room needs a lot of attention, so I'm thinking of what to do with it. Even though the house is temporarily okay, covered veranda is about to fall apart and with that I can do nothing. I've got a load of work ahead of me, but it's always devastating to witness houses collapse when their owners leave them, especially when such houses mean a lot to those who hold memories of them.